everyone, it's Dr. D, and we're going to do step two of the learning map, unpacking your standard. So in step two, you're going to select what standard you're going to design, use for designing instruction. You'll record the grade level and content area, and there's a hyperlink here if you want to look up your California content standards. For this particular example, I selected the Next Generation Science Standards for second grade, which is Structure and Properties of Matter. And when I started unpacking the standard, I kind of got an idea of which ELD standard I'd be having my students work on. So I selected collaborative, which requires students to exchange information ideas with others through oral collaboration conversations on a range of social academic topics. So I already started thinking when I was unpacking, they should be hands-on, students should be talking about what they're seeing, they should be describing, and so on and so forth. So the big questions that I came up with is what conditions cause matter to change and what is the relationship between solid, liquid, and gas? So these might be questions that I front load to my students when I'm starting my unit, things that I want them to think about. Maybe we'll do a KWL chart uh, based on our big questions so that when we're going through the activities in the unit, they're discovering and they're adding on to what they're learning about. So the concepts are solid, liquid, and gas, and the skills will be classifying states of matter based on the properties, okay? They should also be describing different states of matter, and they'll have the skill of being able to identify the different states of matter. Some of the prior knowledge that I thought my students would need to have is to be able to identify characteristics of different states of matter. So they've probably already seen ice and water and gas when they're cooking, what happens to water when it boils, and um, but I want them to be able to classify it here and really apply the, the idea of the states of matter to what they already know. They might build on some of their funds of knowledge based on, you know, some prior learning about the five senses and how we can use the five senses to help us um, classify different states of matter. All right, so now that I've kind of unpacked that standard, I want to start thinking about writing my learning uh, objective for my students and learning goal. So we get started with thinking about the performance, and I selected the word distinguish. We want to select just one verb, what our students will be able to do. So the students will be able to distinguish between three states of matter, okay? And the condition, which is really the environment um, that they'll be working in and how they will perform um, what they're what I'm going to have them do. I also include support with tools and resources. So students are going to be working at their table groups. So they'll, be, so they'll be working in a small group and they'll have materials in Ziploc bags and they'll be able to describe them and distinguish them and classify them. So they'll have these materials, they'll be working in a small group, they'll you know, be doing some collaboration with their peers and so on and so forth. Criterion, and the criterion is how I'm gonna evaluate um, the learning outcome, how I will know if they're able to do what I want them to do. So in this particular activity, students will describe orally and with pictures and words, maybe I'll have them write or describe, at least two characteristics of each state of matter. Then I'm going to get started. Now that I've thought to unpack what my performance conditions and criterion are, I can write a learning objective. And my objective is students will be able to distinguish between three states of matter and provide examples based on their observations. The academic learning language outcome, this is really connected to the four language skills for our students, which is speaking, listening, writing, and reading. So think about it, based on this activity that I've kind of unpacked and started to elaborate on, you can see that there's a lot of oral language that's actually happening um, in this activity. So students will orally describe characteristics of liquids, solids, and gases. Um, our language, academic language, obviously should be connected to our content area and what, our, what we're um, studying. It can also include vocabulary and it can include, um, you know, uh, language learning strategies such as questionings and making predictions. Then my social emotional learning companies, competency will be students will demonstrate respect for others because they're working in a small group and they need to know how to work collaboratively. 